Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, James Proton. Every week I will be sharing the experiences that have defined my journey and talking with people who have their own powerful story to tell. It's about doing better and being better in life, business, and all things in between. The Visually Inclined can catch us on YouTube, or you can check us out on just about every podcast platform. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I have a very special guest for you. I think all my guests are special, but this one is really, really special. Uh, my friend Kate Crawford is joining us. Welcome to the show, Kate. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming out here from all the way from over there in Belmar. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so much I want to talk to you about. Uh, what, what's happening in your life right now? Let's start right here. Look, what's happening in your life right now that you're excited about that, that you just like, let's, let's, let's share this. What's, what's got you excited? Uh, so right now is softball season. Uh, one of my daughters is now the starting varsity pitcher for Bell Vernon high school. Yeah. How about that? Uh, so it's, ah, uh, it makes me feel all the feels I'm happy, excited, scared, angry. It, it just, it makes me feel everything. Uh, but it is, it's, it's, it's an absolute dream to be able to watch your kids grow yeah. into being humans and have their own personalities and loves. And this is her love, so I just share in the in the, in the excitement with her. That's that's awesome. And when you told yeah. me, yeah, I wasn't even thinking varsity because the last time I saw her, she was probably that big. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, I'm thinking. Did Rex softball start already? Yeah. Said, no. And, you, and then you told me she's starting pitcher for the varsity. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's so exciting. It's yeah. crazy. Where do we start on this journey? Of yours? You you have been, um, oh, wow. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Life is tough. To You've had a lot on your place, sweetheart. You really yeah. have. And, you know, you're, you're, well, let's just go here. Your cancer journey has been something that um, you have openly shared your story and it's sometimes very raw, very vulnerable. Um, and I think you're actually, you've been heroic to a certain extent. And I think as an advocate for people, women who are in particular, who are battling that right now or in a survivor community, um, you're, you're doing things that not a lot of others are. And yeah. Talk me through that. When, when you first got your diagnosis, you were young. You were about 28, 29? I was 28 when I was first diagnosed. And it was, yeah. and it was a traumatic diagnosis, right? It wasn't like, hey, it, this is what It can was, do. yeah. I mean, I just showed up to the doctor one day, and then within that same month, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. So there wasn't even time to work through everything that had happened it was just kind of mm -hmm. like boom I was diagnosed it was all through my liver all through my pelvis all through my spine and it was just survival mode from then on so completely normal life to yeah, life had, flipped upside you had down no symptoms or, or or like I mean you you had no I nothing to, to give you the no. idea that you had well especially at 28 right you know what I mean um I don't think anybody would wake up and, and say to themselves, like, I've had this cough that won't go away. It's cancer. Um, I don't think anybody would think that, no. let alone, you know, someone who has been, it's been drilled in society's mind that young people don't get cancer. Right. Um, so the symptoms that I did have, I just thought, I'm a tired mom. I hurt my back playing with the kids. Um I am not eating right because I have young kids. So I, I kept on making excuses for all these things that were going on. Rationalizing everything. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't until after my diagnosis that a surgeon sat me down and said, every single one of these things that you have been experiencing were all related to cancer. And I just didn't know. Wow. Well, who would know that? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you get, you have a pain here, a pain there. Like you said, a cough. <laughs> right. I mean, you, don't, you don't think something that dire... And you were you were given a very grim diagnosis. You, you, you were given a ten or fifteen percent chance of survival. Yeah, for five years. For five years. Yeah, yeah. When you're what eleven years? Now. I'm eleven years out now. Look at you. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. God bless you. That's that is that is so cool. And it, I mean, it, you were a mom through all this. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, was, it's like there was no stopping. Yeah, you know, you just had to, you just had to cowboy up. You yeah. Know? I mean, it was. And I know, you know, Steve, you, you, you're, you're blessed. I got to give, I got to give him some props. He's a good, good man. He and, is. and, you know, you guys. And thank you for recognizing him because that's, the, that's a hard part being a caregiver. Oh my You know, goodness. right. Is, is his world stop just as much yeah. as I did, as mine did. Um, mm -hmm. And he doesn't really get that recognition for all the things he's had to do. And you know, you have four children. Yes. And um, I know you, uh, your, your first daughter, you lost her tragically early. Yes. Uh, three days after she was born, she passed away. She had two congenital birth defects, one that we knew about, one that we didn't know about, but the combination just wasn't compatible to life. Um, so we did comfort care and did all kinds of little things with her, and then she passed away. And that, that's... <laughs> As a as a young mom, that is devastating, and it, yeah. you know, and you've had just said one thing after one thing after another from a health standpoint. Once you got sick, when I look at you, I don't think cancer, right? I I see a, again a very vibrant, happy young woman. Yeah, it's not something that I seek to portray out that. Mm -hmm. You know, cancer, the, the cancer patients have to act the way that I do because, I mean, for the many times that we've been together and have chatted and talked and, you know, um, how I am with you, you also get to see what it's like behind the scenes, too, mm -hmm. just through social media because right. I also will share like not every day is happy and sunshine whether it has to do with cancer or kids or the loss of my daughter um or just even being in the advocacy you know field like the i have really hard days through there um and and one thing that i i don't want people to get is this false narrative right that um everything's you know sunshine and rainbows it can be but c it can also well i mean be hard yeah and i think really it, it's it's no different you have to you have to make your own sunshine and rainbows. yeah you have to make your own happiness yeah right? you have to find your happy but by you sharing the your story and and in the way you do it you changed my perspective on things you really did i i really believe um that the the two strongest words in the English language are me too. Um, so when I share being, you know, raw and open, I want someone to be able to see that and say, I feel that way too, like me too, you know, or um, even if it doesn't have to do with cancer and, and someone just is feeling down and, mm -hmm. and they don't feel alone. I That's honestly the, re I just don't want... I never want people to feel the way that I have felt many times in my life, even though I know it's inevitable that people will sometimes feel that, that way. I think that knowing that other people also feel that way, though, really kind of brings a sense of hope to, to their lives. I love that you, at one point, you, put a pic, you, you posted a picture after, after your surgery, mm -hmm. next to me, and... That probably shocked a lot of people. Yeah. I, I would think it did. And that, that is the exact message that I wanted to be able to share because I do. Um, I'm a fan of TikTok. I love TikTok. Uh, so I do share a lot on social media about my surgery and how I chose not to have reconstruction um, because I, I think it's very important for not even just my generation, my daughter's generation mm -hmm. to see that being beautiful doesn't mean that you yes. have to have, you don't have to be super skinny. You don't have to have, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. You don't have right. to have this perfect body. Like our scars, our imperfectness, our weakness, like those things mm -hmm. also make us beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, I couldn't agree more. So has this has this experience um, made you think about how much do you think about five years from now, ten years from now, twenty years from now? I think as much as I try not to think about it, it's always something in the back of my mind. And 
Um, something that I hear a lot from people is, uh, you know, tomorrow's not promised for anybody. And while that's very true, um, I know I am on borrowed time. Mm -hmm. So I know that I could walk into my doctors uh, next week and they say, you know what, your heart is just not working out with this treatment. We have to stop treatment, which means my cancer would grow, which could lead to my death. So as much as I try not to think about the future, I do love dreaming. Dreaming is just, oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite things. Do you have a bucket list? Yes, yes. So have, you, my, have, you, have you checked anything off yet? Yes. So I have I uh, created a bucket list kind of for the kids and I when I was first diagnosed, which was silly things. Like I wanted to see them ride a bike or get an A on a paper. I wanted to see, you know, Lily play softball or one of them go to the prom. And the, and the longer life goes on, the more we get to check things off this bucket list. And there are some things on there for me, too, like... I've met uh, Matt Reif, who's a comedian. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I have gone, we, well, we have went on family vacations. My husband and I have done things. So being able to dream about the m- upcoming things that I would mm-hmm. want to see, like I would love to see the girls go to college, nice. to get married. Like that's what I think of in 5, 10, 20 years are the things that I still want to see and do with my family. Good for you. Good for you. So you had said that you've had over 180 treatments. I will have had 180 treatments at the end of April. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is a number that... How do you get your head around that? I don't know. It's... it's um, a weird like paradigm to be in to celebrate a high number that I really don't want to have. Right. Um, but it also is just something that the competitor in me is like, <laughs> I'm going to keep going like 180. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Um, and it is nice to <clears throat> be able to focus on milestones, right? Because, you know, when you're diagnosed with an earlier stage cancer, you typically have, say, six treatments and then you're done. Yeah. Um, and that you get to have a big celebration. I've never had any of that. So when I get these big numbers, like I had a big celebration when I hit 150, um, maybe we'll go out to dinner at the end of the month when I hit 180. Like those things just, they really do keep me going. Have you had a break? I had one break uh, because my heart could not take the medication that I was on. So I had a four-month break, but in that those four months, my cancer came back. So I had to go back on. Oh, so I, I'm, I'm in this uh, cycle where I have to have this medication because it keeps my cancer at bay. But it also weakens my heart. So mm-hmm. when it weakens my heart to the point that my heart can't function, I have to come off of it for a little bit. But I can't come off of it for long. Okay. Wow. That's also why I work and do advocacy work. Mm-hmm. I work a lot with a lot of local breast cancer organizations that support research because the longer I'm alive means the more drugs that will be available for me. So mm-hmm. I, I love being a support for other women in the community, but also I have a selfish reason, right? Sure. Like sure. I, I want more drugs to be available. I would love to live to see a cure. So I just know the longer I'm alive you know, maybe we'll come out with the next medication that won't be so bad for my heart. You're, uh, you're, you're stronger than I am. Let me tell you that much. So I want to, I want to talk uh, while we have some time, I want to talk about Project Sweet Peas. Okay. That is really, really cool. Tell me, yeah. tell, me tell us about that. Uh, so after my first daughter passed away, she was in the NICU for just a few days and that's mm-hmm. where, you know, she lived her whole little life. Um, I, and I left there with an immense sense of grief, not just for leaving my daughter, but I didn't get to make any memories with her. There weren't a lot of things that I could do. Um, and then my twins were born premature. And then my son was also born premature and he had a lot of health issues as well. Uh, so I, again, just the giver in me didn't want people to feel alone like I did. So excuse me, myself and one of my best friends decided that we were going to start 
making care packages for NICU families. Yes. Yeah. Um, and our little project grew to be, it's a, you know, nationwide organization now. They have uh, probably about 20 chapters in different states. Uh, they deal with You all started all this here. Yeah, it started right here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. And now, um, you know, in 2014, we started, it's called NICU Awareness Month, which is celebrated globally. Um, it's celebrated by, um, I've seen Kim Kardashian post about it. I've seen Chris Pratt post about it. Like celebrities that have had NICU babies even no, celebrate it now. And it really was a great way to... Um, involve all parents that mm -hmm. had babies in the NICU because not all are premature. Some have birth defects. Some just kind of go for a little bit to grow. Mm -hmm. sure. um, and then some are there for up to a year sometimes. Yeah. 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 So NICU Awareness Month really became a month that the whole entire NICU community could get together. Uh, we can thank the staff, the neonatologists, the They're researchers. Amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. People. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, are you still involved with the organization? Uh, so I sit like as an advisor to them. Okay. Again, I, I'm a dreamer. I love coming up with ideas. Um, so I love saying, hey, I have this idea. You guys should do this. Should do <laughs> <laughs> so I do. I, and I do love going to research conferences for the NICU mm -hmm. Um because as, you know, time goes on in the healthcare community, things that they're finding are that patients, whether they're babies my age or older, actually do better long term when they're in involved in their own decision making mm -hmm. and families are involved in the decision making. So when mom and dad feel like they're taking care of their baby and they're not just visitors, mom and dad have less stress, which means baby has less stress, which means long-term sure. baby does better. Yep. Yep. And even now, like as a cancer patient, like me being involved in my own care and saying, no, I don't want to do that. I, I want to try this. Like on a piece of paper, you can't tell me what my quality of life is because you don't live my life. Yes. So the yes. the longer, you know, we kind of go on and the louder the community is about patient-centered health, the more mm -hmm. research is done on it to say like, hey, they're they're actually right. We're, we're getting better results by right. involving right. these different aspects. To your point, it is a family. It's yes. it's a community. It is a family. They they just look out for each other. It's they do. amazing. Yeah, and I'm still very good friends with uh, Shannon would be 17 and I'm still very good friends with some of her nurses. Really? Um, I, I mean, I can tell you 17 years later conversations that they had with me in the NICU, things that they did to make sure that I had memories with her, yes. uh, the way that they prepared me to be able to not just face her death has mm -hmm. also prepared me for my cancer journey. Uh, so I think sometimes it's hard for nurses or medical staff to mm -hmm. really understand that they're making a difference. But sure. I, I mean, I, I could talk to you for hours about things that, you know, nurses, social workers or other oh, staff right. had, has said to me that has stayed with me. That's that is amazing. So your cancer journey, your cancer journey obviously has changed you. Right. I would say that this 40-year-old Kate is not the same as 40-year-old Kate would have been no. without it, right? Right, right. So what, how do you see that? What, what, has, what has this journey meant to you? A lot of people don't like to say that cancer is a gift, and I, I would never say that, that anyone should say that. You know, cancer is not a gift. If, if I could have lived my life without cancer, I probably would have been okay, right? But the lens that I have on life because of having been diagnosed with cancer, I actually feel, um, I feel like I have an advantage over a lot of other people or parents, mm -hmm. um, especially because I don't take things for granted. I don't take... Um, I mean, even even the smallest things, I, you'll see me post about it on Facebook because 
even if it's just something as simple as, you know, um, helping my daughter through her first breakup, you know? Right. My right. gosh, what, what a privilege is that? What, what yeah. an absolute privilege. Or even just yeah. turning 40, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that is a privilege that is denied to so many people. And I've had that so many so friends pass away that mm -hmm. never got to experience a lot of these things with their kids. And I would yeah. be doing them a disservice if I acted like any, it was just any other day, you know? Right. Yeah, you have to just wake up every morning and just be great. You do, you do yeah. really, yeah. And I, I, I think there is a uh, new kind of social media campaign that's taken over talking about finding glimmers, but it's something that I have said for a very long time, <laughs> but finding gl like glimmers of hope every single day. Like, that's what can keep anybody going. You don't have to just have cancer to look for different glimmers every single day. Like, again, even just like you just said, like, who would have thought I would be sitting here being able to talk with you? You know, back when I was first diagnosed, we didn't even think that this was achievable. Yeah. Um, so you're my glimmer for today. Do you think this has made you guys closer as a family? I absolutely think that it has, yeah. Because um, I know what it's like to have teenagers. Yes. Right? Yeah. So what, where, where your kids are in age right now. Yeah. Do you think that you're, you guys are a little tighter than the average family? I would say that we are. And my kids have a very deep understanding of what family should be and what it is and what it represents. Um, my kids will often come home and say, I, I don't understand why so-and-so said this or did this. Now, does that, does that mean that they're perfect all the time? No. <laughs> no. Um, no. And I am not perfect all the time either. Nobody I mean, we, we fight like cats and dogs. Yeah, However, at the end of the day, my TV's on downstairs and I'm surrounded by my kids. So by my teenagers, nonetheless. That, you know? that so, in itself is just amazing. Have they have have any of your kids relay convey to you how they how they see you how they feel about this? So they don't know any different, which is which has to be weird for them. Um, they don't remember a mom before cancer. Only I remember that. Only I remember mm -hmm. that I was down on the floor every day playing with them. You know that my life was all theirs. Um, yeah. So they know now and and do and it's sometimes it's a hard pill for them to swallow but um like they understand some days i just don't feel good there's days that i can't do things um they're very keen to that mm -hmm. um and are able to kind of bounce back and you know take care of themselves and figure it out so yeah yeah of, of what you've gone through, what your yeah. journey has been like. And that is why it's it's so important to just be kind. You, you just yeah. always should Don't try me. to be kind to people. Yeah, because no one knows, you know, what happens or yeah. what they're battling. Um, so it, it's always important to just be kind. Yeah, you're a, you're a shining light. You're oh, a bright light. You. And, and you make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's just... That's just all I, I just want to be me. Well, listen, you know. I, I really appreciate you, uh, you coming and joining us.